Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship. I'm Robert Roseberry, pastor here at St. Paul's, and I want to thank you for tuning in today to worship God with us on this Epiphany Sunday and Baptism of the Lord Sunday. You probably can see the wise men uh, that are now in the manger scene and also our baptism font. Uh, and Baptism of the Lord Sunday is traditionally the Sunday that we renew our baptism vows here at the church. So on this um, maybe a little complicated Sunday, we do come still to be here by the altar in the manger scene to listen, reflect, and worship. And maybe through slowing down and turning our focus to God, we can hear the voice of God more clearly and walk in the light of the Lord more faithfully. Here at St. Paul's, we seek to be a Christian community that affirms God's love by transforming lives, connecting generations, impacting our community and world, and making disciples for Jesus Christ. If you're signed into your Google or YouTube account, you should be able to participate in our group chat, which is live right now during the service. If you're watching us for the first time and would like to know more about following Jesus or just more about our church here at St. Paul's, please contact me here at the church and I'd love to set up a time to meet with you and answer any of the questions that you may have. So now that you're already on our channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the alert bell to get alerts from our channel in the weeks ahead when we post new content here on YouTube. The church office is open during this time, but on a limited basis as the church staff works remotely as much as we possibly can. You're still welcome to call the church office, though, if you need assistance or have any questions. We are still checking our email and voicemail, even when we're not on campus. So, as I mentioned before, today is a Sunday that's going to be different. Uh, we are uh, putting together a lot of symbols today, but we're also um, doing things a little bit different. You might uh, be asking yourself, for instance, why is the uh, chrismon tree still up here? Well, let me explain. In the church calendar, the Christmas season, you may know or may not, uh, the Christmas season ends on January the 6th on what is called the Feast of the Epiphany. It's when we celebrate the manifestation or the appearing of Christ to the wise men. And the symbolism of Christmas, Epiphany, and Baptism of the Lord's Sunday are all represented on the Chrismon tree. Keep in mind, it is not a Christmas tree, but a Chrismon tree. It's all about the identity and the person of Jesus Christ, who Jesus was, who he is, and what his presence and coming means to the world. So in this season after Epiphany, the key is to focus on the important events of Jesus' life as he begins his ministry. Epiphany, as I said before, means an appearing or a revealing. It's when we have a moment of insight, when something suddenly appears to us. For instance, we've all probably had epiphanies on this crazy week. So this season, unlike Advent and Lent, it marks a time when the rest of the world begins to have their own epiphany, just like the wise men did. Jesus appears among them. And, and also kind of among us as we are human beings as well. And Jesus begins his earthly ministry, healing, saving, and reconciling the world to God. This appearing is the moment that many people begin to recognize that there is something heavenly among them. They recognize that here on this crazy earth that we all live on with all of our problems, sins, and sickness. And we, we kind of proclaim here in this moment that God has decided that he will bring heaven to us. That's what people begin to realize, that somehow God has given them a piece of heaven in the person of Jesus Christ. Or that, as St. Paul would say in Ephesians, the things in heaven and the things on earth would be brought together. This is, what, this is when epiphanies happen, when something heavenly comes into our weary world and shows us the truth of our existence. We say, aha, and we see the light for the first time. During the Sundays after Epiphany, we lock on to the symbol of light. There's the light in the heavens that the wise men or the magi followed to get to Jesus. That Bethlehem star we were all trying to get a good look at last month. And then there's Jesus being called the light of the world. And the moment that Jesus is baptized is when heavens are ripped apart and this light of the world begins to shine and his ministry begins for all of the world to see, to appear among them. This new year, while we're glad to have the old one over with, is still a year where we're going to need the light of Christ to shine brightly 
in our human experience. If we don't see it after this week, then we're really in trouble. We need to find the light. We need to use it to keep our own spiritual chins up. But we also need it so that we can point others to Christ. We need to remember that Christ works in us as well as beyond us. If this Sunday is about anything, it's about the response of the church and the individuals within it to that light and to respond to that light and walk the path of Jesus each and every day. It's about beginning 2021 with the mindset of connecting heaven and earth together right now. Not thinking that we have to wait until we get to heaven, but claiming that promise and working for it now, right here on this earth. So this Sunday, as we remember the Epiphany and we celebrate our place in the continuing work of the Epiphany through our baptisms, let us go to God in prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We've come together today as the children of God to praise and worship our Father. And Lord, we do worship you, the creator of heaven and earth. We gather as people from all walks of life. And when we leave this place, we go back to those walks of life. But while we are together, we have two things in common. Number one, we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And number two, we all have a God who specializes in forgiveness. Let's come, let us come, Lord, repenting of our sins, being baptized no longer just of water, but of the Holy Spirit. We pray for healing for the many national wounds that have been exposed and expressed this week. While we may worship as a way to escape those pressures and experience a time away from all that stress, we do recognize that this time of worship, while it may be a, a welcome respite, is also a time to brighten our lights so we might shine with the light of epiphany to those who are still in darkness. Here we are, God. We are your beloved children. Be pleased with our worship today. We pray in the name of your Son, our Savior, and the epiphany of your love to the world, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our opening hymn as we commemorate the Epiphany uh, and the visit of the Magi to the baby Jesus uh, our opening hymn this morning is We Three Kings. It's on page 254 of your hymnal, if you have it with you. Let's join in worship through song as we sing of the three visitors who came and brought the world to the newborn king.
Good morning. I'm Sid Corbett, your liturgist for today. Today's scripture is from Acts 19, 1 through 7. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul took a route through the interior and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He asked them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you came to believe? They replied, We've not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, What baptism did you receive then? They answered, John's baptism. Paul explained, John baptized with a baptism by which people showed they were changing their hearts and lives. It was a baptism that told people about the one who was coming after him. This is the one in whom they were to believe. This one is Jesus. After they listened to Paul, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came unto them, and they began speaking in other languages and prophesying. Altogether, there were about twelve people. The Word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. Good morning, everyone. I'm coming to you this morning from the youth room, where we all spend a lot of time on Sundays. I wanted to speak with you about a word that Pastor Robert's going to use in his sermon today. The word is baptize or baptism. Baptize means to sprinkle water on or pour on or cover a person with water. It's a sign that the person belongs to Jesus. Now many of you may have been baptized when you were infants, or you may get baptized when you're a little bit older. You go through a class called confirmation. Some people don't get baptized till they're an adult. During Jesus' life, people were actually baptized by being dipped under water in a river or a stream or even a pond. In my grandfather's house in Pennsylvania, behind there they had a pond, and one of the churches in the area actually went to that pond to baptize people in their church. They had steps that led them down into the pond, and the pastor was there, and they would go through the, the service, and they would actually dip them into the water in the pond and pull them back up, and then they'd walk out. We always thought of kids, it was kind of cool to, to kind of peer over the little bank and watch them. Uh, we, but we didn't understand what it was as much. Now, when Jesus was a young man, he was baptized by, in the Jordan River by John the Baptist. Now, John the Baptist was a very holy man, and he told people to follow God. And if they followed God, G John would baptize them. John baptized Jesus. But what was interesting is when Jesus came up from the water, there was a voice from God that said, You are my son, and I love you. I am very pleased. A dove came down from heaven. And that's why in many churches you will see a dove in a stained glass window, and it may be pointing downward. That's the dove God sent down to represent his love for Jesus. Today, followers of Jesus practice baptism in many different ways, as I described before. But it's a way that babies and small children can be baptized. It's a way that adults can be baptized. There's different ways to do it. In the United Methodist Church, we do it as infants, or we do it as young children, or we do it even as adults. Everybody can be baptized no matter what age you are. However baptism is done, we're reminded that God chooses us and is pleased with us. When we see someone being baptized, remember your own baptism just like I remember my own baptism. Let's pray. God, help us to live as you want us to live. Help us to live as your child and to focus everything that we can on doing what you want us to do and remember how much you love us. Amen. Have a great week, everyone. Thank you, Craig, for that children's sermon. Now, as we worship through prayer at this time, let me invite you, if you have a prayer request or even a praise, to type it in the chat window. And as you type them, I'll be adding the names from our weekly mailers prayer list. So in this way, we can see the prayers of the people as we add them to our conversation. In our prayers, let's remember to pray uh, for peace as our nation transitions from one administration to the next. And also to pray especially for those who are suffering from the effects of the coronavirus and those who, because of their occupations, put themselves at risk of catching this harmful virus in order to protect us and keep us safe and supplied. As we enter this holiday season, please remember those who might still need a little encouragement during this time. 
either because they've been isolated from their family and friends to preserve their health, or those who've maybe lost friends and family over the past year. Please give them a call and keep in touch with them to make sure they're okay. Now let's join in praying together, and as we pray, you'll hear Light of the World. Open the windows of heaven 
and pour out your spirit upon us. Let it fall like rain on a hot summer's day. Let every drip and drop be accompanied with the refreshing breeze of that rain-cooled air that we remember. Let it penetrate our hearts, our minds, and our spirits. Lord, we are your vessels. Let your Holy Spirit wash over us and fill us, as we read about in the Acts of the Apostles, so that we may walk as you have called us to walk, talk as you have called us to talk. Let us now have the power and the courage to carry your gospel to our neighbors far and wide. Comfort and embrace all those whose names we've lifted up today in prayer, and may they know your healing love, which can salve any wound. Lord, we also turn our hearts to the pain and the anger that we have witnessed this week. Lord, our nation is hurting. We are hurting just seeing what is happening. And we pray that you would also comfort, embrace, and heal our weary land. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Now, on this admittedly dual-purpose Sunday of Epiphany and Baptism of the Lord, we're going to read two different gospel passages. Uh, the first will be from the Gospel of Mark as we read about Jesus' baptism in the Jordan River. And also we'll read from the Epiphany story, the story of the visit of the Magi to uh, the, G the baby Jesus as he is uh, still there. His family is still there in Bethlehem. It could have been about two years after his birth. And so as we read these gospel accounts today, these two seemingly very different gospel accounts, I want us to focus on what it is that is appearing in these accounts, where, where the light is that is appearing to people and um, becoming known in their presence, because that is epiphany. And then when we take those epiphanies and we connect them with our baptisms, we have that true um, change in our souls and in our hearts that brings that lifelong journey with Christ to bear. It makes the journey possible, in other words. And so as we read from the Gospel of Mark, we're going to read a, an account that, much like you'd expect from Mark, is pretty quick and uh, pretty rushed. Uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. But then we'll read from the Gospel according to Matthew afterwards. And now uh, you'll see the story of the visit of the Magi to the baby Jesus. So let's get started in uh, the Gospel according to Mark. We're going to read chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. And I'm reading from the Common English Bible translation. Uh, you may have a slightly different translation there in your home, uh, but the story should be uh, remarkably the same here. We read that John the Baptist was in the wilderness calling for people to be baptized to show that they were changing their hearts and lives and wanted God to forgive their sins. Everyone in Judea and all the people of Jerusalem went out to the Jordan River and were being baptized by John as they confessed their sins. John wore clothes made of camel's hair. With a leather belt around his waist, he ate locusts and wild honey. He announced, one stronger than I am is coming after me. I'm not even worthy to bend over and loosen the strap of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. About that time, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee, and John baptized him in the Jordan River. While he was coming up out of the water, Jesus saw heaven splitting open and the spirit like a dove coming down on him. And there was a voice from heaven, you are my son whom I dearly love, in you I find happiness. Let's continue our journey in the Gospels here from uh, Matthew chapter 2. We'll read verses 1 through 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in the territory of Judea during the rule of King Herod, Magi came from the east to Jerusalem. They asked, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We've seen his star in the east and we've come to honor him. When King Herod heard this, he was troubled and everyone in Jerusalem was troubled with him. He gathered all the chief priests and the legal experts and asked him where the Christ was to be born. They said, in Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what the prophet wrote. You, Bethlehem, land of Judah, by no means are you least among the rulers of Judah, because from you will come one who governs, who will shepherd my people Israel. 
Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and found out from them when the time, the, the time that the star had first appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search carefully for the child. When you've found him, report to me so that I too may go and honor him. When they heard the king, they went, and look, the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stood over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother. Falling to their knees, they honored him. Then they opened their treasure chests and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Because they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they went back to their own country by another route. These accounts are the word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. So as we as we have seen what we might think is the uh, reinvigoration of 2020 this week, um, it still seems as though this year is one where we need the light of Christ to resonate within our human experience even more concretely than we thought possible. And, you know, we're taking our cues from the Gospel of Mark this week. There are no magi in Mark's story. There's no star guiding the path. There are no dancing angels singing a proclamation of the coming of the one for whom all creation waits. The story begins with John, a river, and then the tearing of heaven as everything gets remade and, and a dove descends down on that moment. If anyone can combine and pack together weights and meanings and symbols and moments, it is Mark. He packs things together so densely that we, are, uh, we read through the gospel, and if we're not careful, we miss important things. Mark's gospel, as you've heard me refer to many times, is, is a fast gallop through the story of Jesus. We're often left panting on the roadside, wondering what's going on. And even this story, the baptism of Jesus, it, things seem like they're, it seems like Mark is more concerned with meeting a flight schedule in, somewhere than with actually telling us the tale. We want more from his description. Notice that there is nothing here about John's preaching that we end up getting from Matthew and Luke. Those stories contain many different details. There's nothing about the conversation between Jesus and John that appears in the Gospel of John. Just in and out, get it done, boom. There's no actual description of the baptism at all. Did you notice that? It's just, as he's coming up out of the water, this happens. We did not, we're not told how he was baptized, what John and Jesus said to each other, anything like that. He came to be baptized, and then as he was coming up out of the water, he saw what he saw. It's like we skipped over the event itself which may seem strange for such an important event. And given how much we Christians argue about the methodology of baptism, you would think that Mark would have shared more detail here. It's almost as if the real importance is what happens afterward. Do you remember your baptism? Some of us do, those who maybe have been baptized as youth or young adults. But many of us don't because it happened before our remembers kicked in. Yet even those of us who remember our baptism only because someone told us about it, we can still remember what happened afterward. Because now is afterward. The life we live as baptized followers of Jesus is that afterward. The new creation that we choose to make of ourselves every single day of our lives is that afterward. And the new creation that we are and that we are becoming is this curious mixture of word and spirit. There are words pronounced over us at our baptism, and there is spirit that is given from the community of faith. And through those things, we are remade. A new creation, a fresh start. Heaven opens and we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit through those moments. So we need reminders. It's too much of an event to keep in our hearts all the time. We forget what a transformative moment baptism is. We forget that everything old is torn away, like the heavens were split apart, as Mark tells us. 
We forget that our orientation is from that moment. Our new life is claimed in that moment. We forget what we're looking for, where we forget, excuse me, that what we are looking for, what we're longing for is already ours in that moment of baptism. We lose our grip. Lord, we lose our grip. We forget it even happened. And we are still running. We, as, as individuals, as a society, and Lord knows as a country, we are still looking for what we already have. Remember your baptism. It's not just an empty ritual for Sunday mornings. It's a way of living that keeps our eyes open for the descending doves of the Spirit. It's a choice that we can claim to embrace the possibilities in front of us instead of the doubts within us. It's an opportunity to know that we are loved and claimed and that whatever darkness is hiding away in our past or our hearts does not define us anymore. It is a family that we've entered into who will run with us as we search for what we're looking for and who will avoid saying, I told you so, when we realize that it's been right in front of us the whole time. The tearing of heaven and earth continues. The remaking continues. Our lives are constantly being taken apart and put back together again. And whether we see it as descending upon us like a dove or not, or whether it feels like that gentle image or not, and it might not, the Spirit is a constant companion throughout our lives. It is what inspires us to love and serve and learn and grow. It is what equips us to be a part of the body of Christ in unique and powerful ways. It's what tears us open to new ways of living, new ways of being. And whether we hear it or not, the word spoken over us at our baptisms is a word of affirmation. God sees the light placed within us and he pronounces it good. The voice proclaims to me, to you, to everyone who is baptized, you are my beloved. With you, I find happiness. Not done, not complete, not perfect, but good. God's, in God's eyes, good. Now, as you can probably imagine, it's been difficult uh, for me to figure out how I might do something to take a sermon about epiphany and baptism of the Lord's Sunday and find a way to connect it in helpful ways to what we've really seen going on this week. This has been a tough week. I don't care who you are or where you stand on the political spectrum. This has been a, a hard week to see the news. It's been a hard week to pray because we see so much hopelessness. And by the way, we're still in the middle of a pandemic. We're still struggling with people in our midst who are sick. Things are tough all over. And in times like this, I think we can easily fall into despair. And, and who can blame us, right? But it offers us a very clear opportunity to see the importance of the work of Christ. Last week, we talked about Paul's passage in the Ephesians as he's writing to the Ephesian Christians. And he, he says, I'm paraphrasing here, this is the Roseberry Standard Version, but he says that, that what we are doing as Christians, our primary objective, our, our job description, is connecting heaven and earth, connecting all things together in Christ, with Christ. Later on, in another letter of Paul's, he talks about that God in Christ, that, that in Christ, God's objective was to reconcile the world to God. That God was going to take the world, and now we can no longer kid ourselves. The world's a mess. God, God took the world, and he's reconciling that world to himself. He's taking heaven and earth, and he's bringing them together so that there is healing, so that there's salvation. And so that there is an answer to our cry of why, Lord, why? And our job as Christians, as, as the individual broken apart but still together 
manifestation of the body of Christ here on earth today, right now, our job as Christians is to do that work, to reconcile heaven and earth, to bring them together in Christ so that there may be healing and salvation, not just for you, me, and our, our favorite brother, but for the whole world, for the whole creation. Salvation is not just about my soul and your soul or, or me and you. It's about everything. When we are healed, the world is healed. Creation is healed. That's the promise there. It's not just about the people. It's about the creation. That's why it's so big and why, why Mark is so focused, not on the event itself, but on what happens afterward. Like many of you, I was born or I was baptized um, just not long after I was warm, as Monty Python said. And I don't remember my baptism. I have pictures of me in a beautiful, really feminine, long, white, lacy gown that was my christening gown. And uh, my parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles all around me on the church steps and holding this beautiful, lacy baby. Um, but I personally don't remember. But what is important, really is not whether I can remember, but whether I can remember every single day afterward. Whether I cannot recall, but remember. In other words, split those words apart, re and member, put back together. Whether I can through my life and you can through your life and we can as a church, re put together God's work that he did in our baptism to bring heaven and earth together, to bring heaven to us earthy people that are baptized, and for us agents of heaven now, baptized, to bring heaven to people who need it. Now, I know that's an abstract image, and um, for some of us, we can artistically understand it, and other folks may need some more concrete descriptions, and, and I get that. Here's what this looks like in everyday life. When we bring heaven, we are bringing that which is good, that which is holy, that which is perfect, that which is loving. We are bringing that which heals. And all of the opposite, pretty much, is what is earthy. Now, earth isn't all bad. God created it, and he loves it. it but it's imperfect. You, you know, there, there's good and bad all smushed in together. And it's hard to make sense of things. We've certainly felt that this week. And... We, when we take heaven and bring it together with the earth, with the messy stuff, what we're doing is we're bringing the healing. We're bringing love. We're bringing the, the healing to someone who is hurting emotionally or physically. We're bringing the, the, the love to someone who has never felt love before. We're bringing affirmation to someone who has never felt that or heard that from people in their life. We're bringing a hug to someone who desperately needs a touch of love and grace. We're bringing forgiveness to someone who just wants a fresh start but doesn't feel like they're good enough. We're bringing hope to someone who is hopeless. And we are bringing a word of peace and love and togetherness and concord to a world that is more and more seeming like it is completely and utterly lost its mind at war. That's bringing heaven to earth. And while we do that, we do call out the evil that we see. And yet we still remember to encourage the growth of the heavenly things among us as we do that. It can be a hard thing to do because the natural inclination of us messy humans, though we are, even though we're baptized and we're growing in our sanctification, the, the natural thing for us still to do is to fight that war. But that's not the way of Christ. The way of Christ is to take heaven and apply it to earth like you would your dry and cracked hands after a long day on the job. That's our work under the waters of baptism and the dove of the Holy Spirit. So as we affirm our baptisms, reaffirm our baptisms, and as we affirm our work as Christians to bring heaven and earth together, let's reaffirm our commitment 
to bring heaven and earth together as we reaffirm our baptism. When heaven came to us, in other words, let's do that today. Now, I know that you may not have waters of baptism with you. Odds are you don't. But even though you may not have that, and I don't want you sitting on the couch to dump water all over yourself, but what we can do is in this different moment where our baptism reaffirmation looks a lot different, we can still maybe hear it differently so that it's not the same ritual we've been through every year, but that it's something new that we experience. These shells are likely what was used when Jesus was baptized. And so when we use them today to, to pour the water and you hear the water um, in the baptism bowl, remember those waters of grace pouring over you. Remember the love of God pouring over you. Remembering the healing pouring over you today. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation, and we are given new birth through water and the Spirit. All of this is God's gift offered to us without price. Through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism. We acknowledge what God is doing for us, and we affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's ambassadors in the world? The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept through the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow, light shining through water. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the waters of the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan River to the land which you had promised. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a mother's womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. And he called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit and by this gift of water, call to our remembrance the grace declared to us in our baptism. For you have washed away our sins and you clothe us in righteousness throughout our lives that dying and rising with Christ, we may share in his final victory. I'd like for you to close your eyes wherever you are right now. And remember your baptism. Picture those waters of grace flowing over you. The Holy Spirit coming down to you. Seeing heaven ripping open and coming through to you right now. Remember your baptism. Because if you are baptized, that happened. And be thankful. May the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ, one who faithfully takes heaven and connects it with earth who brings the two together in their life. 
So let us rejoice as we remember our baptism. Would you join me in prayer? May the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, may God establish and strengthen us by the power of the Holy Spirit that we might connect your realm, heaven, with this messy realm, earth, and that we may all live in grace and peace. Amen. While we are certainly still in different times and, uh, of course, worshiping differently and ministering differently to our community, the work of the church, that is, that essential spreading of the gospel and that bringing epiphanies to the world is still going on. We are still bringing people the good news of Christ, but in new and different ways in this new and different season that we're in together. During this Sunday, even though this worship is online, you can still give your gifts to St. Paul's. You're welcome to mail your check into the church. Our address is 800 Southeast 41st Avenue, Ocala, Florida, 34471. You can also go to our website, which is spocala.org slash giving. And if you're already on our homepage, just click on the word giving in the toolbar. There you can find instructions on how to sign up for electronic giving. And this can be a one-time gift, or you can also sign up for regular giving straight from your checking account. It's what Heather and I do. The third option is to hit the donate button on our Facebook page. And following the instructions, you can also make your gift using that method. Thank you for your support of God's work through St. Paul's. Would you join me in prayer as we bless our offering this morning? God of grace and glory, you call us with your voice of flame to be your people, faithful and courageous. And as your son embraced his mission in the waters of baptism, Inspire us with the fire of your spirit to join in his transforming work, giving of ourselves so that your glory might remain paramount and more enlightened to the more enlightening to the world. In your name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is Heart the Herald Angels Sing. If you have a hymnal with you, it's on page 240. Let's open our hearts in worship as we sing this hymn of hope and good news. That is real good news here today.
we close worship today here on YouTube, let me thank you all for joining us. Thank you to all the staff and volunteers who continue to make worship possible here at the church. On this Epiphany Sunday and Baptism of the Lord Sunday, and as we start the new year on the secular calendar, let's remember our baptism, be thankful, and live out our covenant to see the light and follow the light of the Lord. I hope this worship blessed you this morning, and would you please receive the benediction as we depart together. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Let it shine, let it shine.